speaking to them in a friendly way, but your heart dislikes that. Who said that? This is their books. Who said that? This is their scholars. Who said that? This is the cousin of Muhammad. It says here, uh, the one who take the disbelievers, the Jews, as the, for their friend, so as for the become mighty, might and honor, like if you make an honor, read friendship, in the preference to believers, the one who do take them as a friend, and he is sincere in that friendship, the one who do that, seeking might and honor by taking the non-believers, they call us hypocrites, imagine, and the disbelievers as a friend, he has no connection with Allah, he has no honor, mercy, or protection from Allah. But what happened? He just took a friend, he's a Christian. Yes, the second you take a Christian as a friend, he is, you are not a Muslim. So what we see today, you know, Muslims, they joined the Congress in USA. They died. You see the Congresswoman with her name from Somalia. She dies. She danced with a homosexual. All of this is to betray the system. Taqiyya. This is the, this is the verse about Taqiyya. It says here, it, in minhum tuqat. So you do Taqiyya. Taqiyya mean, read carefully. Guard yourself against them. Save yourself from them. Taking as it were security, taqiyya, saving yourself from, be, by, from, from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them while your heart is like this. Do you see it? Uh, my friend, we don't care if Muhammad was illiterate or he was not illiterate. Muhammad was an idiot in either way. Who care? All right, we have an ex-Muslim. You want to ask questions, so we will take it. Hello. Hello, Stevie. How are you? Hey, Muhammad. How are you, my friend? Good. I'm good. Uh, I actually have a question for you. If you All right. Don't mind. Uh, okay, so here's something. Whenever I uh, try to talk to one of my relatives, uh, namely my brother, about some of the points you bring, right? Like, so uh, al Maida, I number 90, right? Okay. So I can mention that, okay, go to Asbab al Nazul, this book, and read. Yeah. This right, and then they gonna tell me one of multiple things. So, one of them is in the same uh, asbab uh, nuzul. Yeah. It, it mentions other reasons. Okay. Right? So, so there's like four different reasons, and the funny thing is that they are contradictory. So we don't know which is read and which is not. So they might always say, okay, why did you pick up that one? Don't right. take it. You know, we can go to different interpretation. As an example, we can go to Al-Baghawi, you know, where Ibn Kathir, he quoted. We can go to Ibn Kathir, we can go to Al-Qurtabi, we can go to take a jail. You know, we are just taking their books randomly. All of them are stupid. All their books is a stupid books, you know. If you go, you see like in, uh, in Arabic, uh, it's different from what you see in English. And you speak Arabic, right? Yes. Okay. So if I go right now, me and you in uh, in Arabic, this is not Asbab al Nuzul. I'm not showing Asbab al Nuzul. Uh, this is Al Qurtubi here. Okay. If they don't like Al Qurtubi, we can go to a different book. What Al Qurtubi is saying, the following, and I'm going to show on the screen uh, so you can see. Yeah, it might take a couple seconds, but go, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, it says here, uh, when a group of Muslims, they were, they were, uh, uh, they were praying, like praying, they got a drunk and, you know, they messed up reading the verses and they were falling apart. So it's here, here, let's see what's, where, where it where start. 
let's go from the top actually in this uh, page show you all this is Asadi Asadi here it says uh, actually Asadi doesn't say anything I just chip it transfer information let us see other one Al Wasit at Tantawi speaking about why or uh, what is bad with it, etc. See here. Yeah, it says here that Amr, uh, when he was reading the Amr al-Khattab, uh, he said, Allahumma bayyan lana fil khamri bayanan shafiya. As you see, this is another problem here in, in Islam because Amr al-Khattab is the reason for verses to come. You remember the hijab? Omar the one who make it. The Kaaba, praying to the Kaaba. Omar the one who make it. The divorce about Muhammad wives, you know, Sagat Aymanahuma. Omar behind to make it. And this one here says that Omar al Khattab, he asked Allah, saying, Allahumma bayyan lana al khamra, al khamra bayyana shafiya. So Allah saying the verse, not Muhammad. It's not Muhammad who asked for it. And then he says, uh, And this is the opinion of the of the of the Kashaf. And some of the scholars they agree with him. And then he continues saying. Uh, it says here that a group of Muslims, uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, uh, he invited some Muslims and they start drinking and get a drunk. And then some of them they stood up to pray. And then when they start reading the prayer of Al Kafirun. Uh, they, you know, like they messed up the chapter and they were reading it not right and they were drunk. Uh, and then when they, they get drunk too, they were saying like, uh, you know, like what the Arab they do when they proud about themselves, they make poetry and they start accusing each other and they're fighting each other. And then here it says, one of them, he took the, the bones of the, of the camel as the other the one we show you. It says, and he hit, hit him with it. And then he went to the Prophet of Allah, and he gave him the verse which Allah he sent to him. And, and this is when Umar, he says, Allahumma bayyan lana fil khamr, bayyana shafiya. So after the guy, he hit the other guy, because all of them are drink, drunk, Umar, he made a prayer saying, may Allah send us a verse about uh, wine. And then the verse came. So if not the fight happened, if not Umar, he asked for it, no verse will come. And this is not a Sbab al-Nuzul, this is a you know, Muslim interpretation, sh sheikhs, uh, they're scholars. Uh, this is al to be no, same story, you know? Uh, so there's actually, actually, uh, and I, 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 I like like talking to you, but I also understand there's uh, the, the other caller might call any moment. It's so, okay, you know, nobody's calling for now, but I mean, do you see this is not our problem? And yeah, where is where just, where the verse where the verse, my friend? Where the verse saying it's even forbidden? But not a silly something, and this is the point. Like I'm, I, I, I don't. It's not a hell I'm wanting to die on. I'm just mentioning it. But and uh, if you think about it, uh, there's so many different stories. Like I'm looking at the screen, and you keep going and going, and that's only one tafsir, and one book. And every one uh, mentioned the story a little bit different, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> this, like, like you know the term uh, Chinese whispers? With, it's basically when people in a circle, uh, you start, you whisper to your friend, you tell him like a sentence that goes all around. And uh, at the end, you listen to it, it's totally different story. You see, the, the, same, the same verse, there's a million, like now here, I'm reading a different story here. It says that this is about Mu'az ibn Jabal. Uh, he was reciting the Quran, and this is the one Muhammad, he, uh, you know, he, uh, he said when he died, the, the throne of Allah was shaking, <laughs> you know? So uh, 
this guy was a drunk too and they missed the chapter of al, al kafirun they missed it up so you see it doesn't matter what the reason this is the, the end of islam muhammad here is dying this is the end of the life of muhammad chapter 5 but, is chapter number 112 but cp the thing is and here's like whenever i press someone i always get this thing well, it's a uh, weak hadith, you show it, it's hadith, sahih, you tell it, it's weak. But regardless, they always go back and tell you, we accept the following, we accept the Quran, we accept the... No problem, if you accept the Quran, there's not a single verse in the Quran saying it's forbidden to drink alcohol. Show me. This verse, it says, you speak Arabic, they speak Arabic, it says, yeah. it says, Ijtanibu. Actually, I argued exactly for that, because, <laughs> like, when they don't want... Like someone could argue that when you say it's too bad, uh, it's something from the devil, don't even come clear to it. That means hey, it's so bad. No, it's no, my friend. Oh, okay. Oh, there's many things from the devil. Is, isn't it lying from the devil? But most of there's no punishment for lying. The Islam actually encourages you to lie. Uh, 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 what? You see, there's, there's, the many, Muslim, there's many other things. There's many other things. Everything is, is bad. Yeah, but what is, sorry, what is the punishment? Want, what, is the, what, what is the punishment in the Quran? What is the punishment in the Quran? Yeah, but, but CP, they take, uh, and I'm sure I was talking over you. Uh, uh, they say we take the Quran and we take the Hadith in the six books. No right? problem. Okay, let's take the Quran. So how Allah, just, just me, how Allah the same God? Me. Hold on, just, just wait with me. How yeah. Allah, the same God, is praising the, the alcohol in different verse in the chapter of An-Nahl? Yeah, for, for me, I understand it's total uh, nonsense, but for them, they can spin it in some ways. I still believe it's nonsense. Uh, but I'm saying, uh, if you go to the, to the Hadith, they accept, they probably find that there's a Hadith that says, Anyone who touches, anyone who says the, uh, the uh, like uh, alcohol, anyone who uh, touches the alcohol, anyone who serves the alcohol, anyone who prepares the alcohol, they are cursed or something like that. Okay, this. was Muhammad cursed? Because Muhammad, he prepared alcohol, he drank alcohol, and all of them, they drink alcohol. As we see, Muaz ibn Jabal. I think he was mentally ill, but like I'm saying in their belief, yeah. right? Like what I'm trying to do is a lot of Muslims rely on someone to come and set them up like the smart uh, the person uh, is so unimportant, Sheikh Osman. Yeah. Uh, and he's a donkey, right? And he doesn't know shit. He's like anything. Sorry. Um, but they always come back and say, ha, look, there's a hadith that says... No problem, uh, you see, even if there's hadith, even if there's a hadith, you see, you can save yourself by the hadith. But then this Islam is not religion, but the Quran itself. But I'm saying, um, um, my question is... For uh, the I, I, I'm advising you, I will listen to me. When a Muslim, yeah. he go, in the, uh, he, take, he try to take you to a corner. In fact, he is cornered himself. So when he says to you, there's a hadith, then you should say to him, so there is no verse in the Quran saying there's a punishment for this because it is a sin. So as long as the punishment is not in the Quran, what is my guarantee that this hadith is even true hadith? It's a hadith. It's if, if Allah, if Allah, words. he sent orders, the order should be in the Quran. Should not be in the hadith. I agree with you, but for them, you know, I think you know that for them, it's Quran and Hadith. No, my, no, my friend, I'm not saying no, I'm not saying no. I know that Islam actually doesn't exist without the Hadith. Yeah. But I'm saying Islam is a stupid religion because if you claim that the Quran is a book and perfect from God, well, the perfect God book doesn't work by itself. <laughs> In the same time, right. if we take the Hadith, if the, we take the Hadith, the Hadith says, and this is a Hadith, this is Sahih. Muhammad he says, anyone who write down anything except what I say, uh, except the Quran, you should erase it. And this is Hadith too. And this is Sahih, this is Sahih Muslim. So Muhammad he says, لا تكتبوا عني ومن كتب عني غير القرآن فليمحو. So don't write anything from me except the Quran. 
if you write anything beside the Quran, erase it. Okay. So now, if we follow what Muhammad said, this they said to you, the hadith, right? But well, this is the hadith saying we should erase the hadith. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, th so here actually, this is a proof to us that Islam is not a religion, because if the book, you know, uh, uh, I am a Christian. Do I need to go and read uh, uh, a book written by somebody, you know, about Jesus to understand what Jesus ordered me to do? No, I will go and see what okay. Jesus said. You know. Let's see, but the truth, the unfortunate truth is. Um... What usually they believe is that they are a weak at religion, and if they read more, they would come with answers. And what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to corner them. So if they tell me, well, we accept the six books of Hadith, I can show them stuff from there. And if they tell me, well, it's weak, I will force them to give me a clear method how they, they accept that. This is Sahih Muslim in front of us now. Oh, this is can be weak. Sahih Muslim is weak. But, but don't they say in Sahih Bukhari there are weak hadith? There's no weak hadith. This is, this is a lie. You see, uh, uh, even like Sahih Bukhari, because there's some, there are a lot of embarrassment, they're trying to get rid of it. So they say it's weak, but it's called Sahih Bukhari for a reason. You see, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari is not even named Sahih al Bukhari by al Bukhari. The Bukhari himself, he did not write a book. This is the Muslim Sunni project. They collected everything Al Bukhari he said, and they called the book Sahih Al Bukhari. There's no book. It's called Sahih Bukhari. It doesn't exist. There's no book. It's called Sahih Muslim. It's not even exist. They don't have a copy. I changed the Muslim to show me original copy of Al Bukhari. Even they themselves they say this is according to according to according to the student of Al Bukhari. He reported hadith, etc., etc. Et so they made a collection. They call it Sahih Al Bukhari, and it's called Sahih Al Bukhari because they study it very well, and every hadith inside it is Sahih. So this is a book. This is why it's called the highest books. Why? Because it's called in purpose Sahih. It was not a name. It was given the title of authentic because this is a collection of authentic only. You know what I'm saying? I understand, but uh, what happens? Uh, I know, I know what will happen, my friend. If somebody, if somebody, he, he will argue, he will argue. If somebody wanted to listen, it's up yeah, to but, him. But it's okay, no they, problem. They, you know, they, you, you, they, you remember the two Arab? There's, there is two Arab, they were hunting. One of them, the first one, he says to him, do you see that goat? I'm going to shoot the goat. He said, the other one, he says to him, well, this is not a goat, this is an eagle. The other one, the first one, he says, no, this is a goat. The other one, he says, okay, let us shoot. And if it fly, then it's an eagle, it's a bird. If it doesn't fly, it's a goat. The guy, he took the gun and he shot. And it did fly. So the second guy said, see, it is not a goat, it's a bird. The first guy, he said to him, you know what? It's a goat, even if it doesn't fly. And you must have you must have grown up at the same time and uh, yeah, don't waste near, your time. Don't waste your time. When somebody, when somebody you know, you are you talking to a, you are talking to somebody. Problem. He believed that the goat no, no, does a fly. Honestly, honestly, there are people who are honest. If they uh, are, if they are honest, they will not play the game of the goat and the bird. You know, they are. They are not. So, but for them, again, it, they have criteria. So they tell you. Well, we believe in this, right? And we believe Quran and these books of Hadith. Okay, no problem. But so just as long... give me one minute. One okay. minute, I promise. Okay. But then you go to Babel Nuzul al Wahidi, we just we are using, and you show him, look, they were drinking by the barrel, and this happened. And they will tell you, okay. Uh, well, show me this in uh, Sahih, uh, in these six books, right? Is there a way to find it in these six books? Uh, you know, I don't, then, I don't know really if this hadith will be exist in the uh, in those six books. I did not, I did not really search for it, but I can check it out. But it doesn't matter. You see, at the end of the day, uh, why why even this book is exist and why they put it in their library and why they teach it in school if it's not valid and you know and why the interpretation all of them they agree with it 
And if you 100 years ago, you asked for the best Islamic books, they would give you these books, right? Exactly, exactly today. And actually, even today, even today, you know, those, the one who reject today is those who, you know, let us say they became uh, more educated and they don't want to accept the reality that uh, Islam is really stupid, you know? That's, that's all. Uh, and actually, even the verse itself is a contradiction because if the alcohol is from the work of shaitan, right? So how yeah. alcohol will be in heaven? And how alcohol in chapter 16 is a miracle of Allah? If they say the alcohol of this earth is from shaitan, will the same book praising the alcohol to be great as a sign from Allah in verse number 60, 67? Chapter 16. So, if the alcohol is from the act of shaitan, how in the world, chapter 16, this is Quran now, this is not hadith. How in the Quran says that this is a sign from Allah? So, what is the goal when it says uh, uh, you have like alcohol without the goal? Without what? La gola, la gola. Yeah, it's, uh, simply it's like uh, they will not even fight about it, they will not uh, go crazy, but it doesn't matter. It's alcohol, it says khamr and haru khamr, not only khamr and har, rivers, rivers of, of wine. Wine is wine, doesn't matter. He, if you promise you won't get drunk, who care? Still, still, it's a wine. So, if the wine is from the act of shaitan, then Allah is importing wine to his heaven. Why? Same time, if wine is in the earth, isn't from the act of shaitan, then chapter 16, verse number 67, claiming that making people get drunk is a goodly provision, and it is a sign for those who have wisdom, not for the fool. It's a sign, and it says here the word goodly, and goodly provision. So how the other verse says this is from shaitan, and this verse saying this is goodly provision, when I think the Muslims, they say this is the third step. Doesn't matter. Uh, you see, it's a third step. That means Allah is deceiving them. Because if Allah, he prays alcohol today, condemn alcohol tomorrow, that means Allah is a liar. Because alcohol is alcohol. Nothing changed. So what step? You know, you do not need to praise it to go in a step. You should actually do the opposite. You should slowly tell them it's not good. It's not right. But as you see, it says goodly. <laughs> I I once heard someone, I don't want to say name, but he said that uh, the goodly stuff, it's the stuff that is used in anesthesia where like they give it to you before the surgery. So like you hear people come up with all different stuff to justify things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to deal with these people. Well, bring them to me and let me deal with them. All right, my friend? Okay, my friend. All right, uh, take care. I'll see you then. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Yeah, our friend here, by the way, those who do not know, he left Islam uh, talking to us, right? Talking here in the program. Uh, that right? No, no. No, no. Uh, okay. Actually, it would I'm have sorry. made my journey uh, faster, to be honest. Can you, remind us? No, can, you, I... can you remind us about yourself a little bit before you go? I'm uh, like I'm originally from Syria. I don't live there anymore. Okay. Um, I was uh, like really devoted when I was a kid because originally I was born in Saudi Arabia. I lived first ten years there. You know, you there's a big impression on you. Yeah. Um, I was totally in it. You know, like totally. Yeah, because all the, all the school is just Islam. You know, there's five uh, five five books they teach you. <laughs> You know, it's it's wicked. Yeah, it's even, really even the class for mathematics is about Islam. <laughs> Not a joke. It was it was like for I don't know if they said all these things, but there was a prayer, uh, a Bukhar prayer. You do it inside yeah, the school. There's no school in the, in the Saudi Arabia. Anyway, it's it's a, it's a it's a like it's a it's a brainwash uh, uh, manufacturer. I don't know now. You know how it is now. But what I know about it, it is a joke. It's not really, it's not a school. Because you have five out of seven teaching uh, a class about Islam. So where is the school? What, what you learn there? You know? Well, uh, the five thing, it's 
uh, I think when you are at, uh, what do you call it, senior year in high school, and then you have five subjects of about Islam. Yeah. Right. But but I also remember that, uh, honestly, it was very easy. Um, you could easily be uh, uh, like successful studying there. Um, anyhow, uh, long story short, uh, then uh, when I became ten, my parents uh, came back home. I was really religious. My uh, father is like a religious person. Um, so growing up, I always had like uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call it, doubts, so to speak. And uh, contradicting stuff, you know, and I can't answer it. And uh, it was really hard because, now I know a lot of people are going to say, yeah, is it? it's not really Muslim, it's not as it is, but Okay, uh, if you grew up where I grew up, that's what they used to teach us. Uh, and what I would argue that uh, that view is correct, because any view is correct when you have something this big as religion. Anyhow, to keep it short, uh, I was really like uh, religious. I couldn't question my religion, that, that was the hardest thing because I used to believe that the devil was uh, communicating with me and uh, trying to make me leave Islam and uh, think the most defining uh, like point in my journey which lasted for years because I was mostly because I was afraid to tackle it but uh, what happened is uh, when I reached the conclusion that I should seek a truth, wherever it is, I was no longer afraid uh, to uh, question and ask these questions. Very good. Well, good for you. Uh, um, Very so happy. Once uh, that happy, uh, happens, you can't stop, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, glad to have you, my friend, and feel free to bring your friends if they like to call us and join us. So let us see how they can resist and they can convince us to be wrong. Thank okay. you very much for calling. Thank, Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have Thank a good you. day. Bye-bye. Yeah, actually in Saudi Arabia, Ooh. this is why Saudi Arabia is the manufacturer of terrorism. If you go actually to the Islamic, uh, the government official website of Saudi Arabia, this is actually, this is there. Uh, uh, this is for uh, uh, the first elementary. The first one here says Riyadhiya, which means mathematics. Here it says science. Then it says uh, Arabic. And then he says English, and this is new, by the way, but in the old, uh, long time ago, English does not exist. There's no English for English, you know? And uh, yeah, and, and now there's a computer. But look, this is Tafsir. This is Tafsir. The subject, Tafsir. The second subject, Hadith. The sec a third subject, is Ijtima'iyat, which means uh, society. It's about Islam, too. The A subject is Tawheed. The A subject, too, is Tahfiz, which means uh, reciting Quran. The sixth subject is Quran. <laughs> the fifth subject is family. It's about Islam too. The, the fourth subject is fiqh, which means about the Islamic law, etc. Like what's right, what's wrong. The third subject is studying Islam. <laughs> the first subject is Quran. <laughs> so what is, what, uh, what, <laughs> Look at the translation, it's funny. Make Quran translated as reading. Quran is a Quran, not Quran. So, Quran, uh, Islamic study, recitation study, Holy Quran study, memorization of the Quran study, uh, monotheism study, social study of Islam. You know, I mean, <laughs> this is why those who study in Saudi Arabia, if you study in the government school, your son will be really <laughs> something. He will learn nothing. He will spend the day learning how to pray, how to clean his nose, and how to spit, in which direction, and how to wipe his nose if he have a booger. Uh, someone saying, um, uh, okay, uh, uh, no.
Let us see this person. Hello. Yes, my friend. Hey, CP, how are you? I'm fine. So you are a Muslim, you said? No, no, I'm not. Oh. I am a Lebanese-born Christian, but Arabic is my first language. Okay. So how yeah, can I, help you? yeah, I really appreciate what you're doing. If there's a proof for the action of the Holy Spirit on somebody's tongue, that would be yours, my friend. So kudos but to I'm, you. I'm, I'm doing nothing. I'm doing just little. Anything I, can have, anything I can help yeah, you with? Yeah, I have it. Yeah. So in my research, I have something that I came across that I can't find an answer for. And I don't think I've heard you talk about. That is okay. what they call is al-huruf al-muqatta' at the okay. beginnings of the surahs, which they don't have. If you, have my, book, if you have my book, you can, ha you can have it. Oh, I don't. Yeah, all right. I'll get it. Okay. Fantastic. No, and we, made, we made videos before about it, too. You did great. Yeah, 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 one of the main ones was the at the beginning of the Surah of Mary Kahayas was like something that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we made we made you know those, those Muhammad the fool he he was stealing them from obviously some some book, uh, and uh, he himself do not know what they meant, and mm. the Muslim himself do not know what it meant. So everybody he start you know guessing what it does mean you know, mm. but if you look at it. Uh, there is no other way to explain it except uh, that Muhammad was copying the Aramaic style of sending coded messages. You know, but mm -hmm. you are from Lebanon, he says, right? Yeah, yeah. There is something it's called speak as uh, as forty. True. You know, like they speak the language of the birds. But the language of the birds, you add letters between the letters. So when, when somebody he don't, is not used to the language, he will not understand the word for what you are saying. So the Aramaic people they used to. Uh, uh, um, use a code because a Christian they were dis discriminated by the Roman and they kill you if they find out that you are a, a Christian you will be killed immediately or you know in the best scenario they will feed you to the dogs or to the uh, their cats so what they do they write letters and those letters they were coded so if a Roman soldier he stopped them he checked what they, they have with them eh, there's nothing he can, he can understand the war you know uh, so Muhammad obviously he took those from I believe from the book of Waraq ibn Nufal, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Waraq ibn Nufal, even the Hadith says that Waraq he used to translate from the Gospel into Arabic. You know, yeah, a book. Speaking, yeah, I was going to ask you. Speaking of Waraq ibn Nufal, what's your take on the book Qiswa Nabi, who was written by a Lebanese? It's a good priest. book because it's make a good uh, kind of like uh, compare study. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it save you time to find verses, but there's way more verses than what is written there. Uh, Muhammad he stole from the from the Bible. But the important and that's, for us that's th in your book. Uh, no, I mean, uh, for, for me, I speak about certain verses. Like example, uh, when the Quran speak about uh, that the uh, This is a this is a poetry from Amr al Qais. Muhammad he took it and he changed it. And, uh, you know, he make it, uh, it's coming from his God. But the, but the, but the poetry is there. Um, and, you know, it's very well known, very famous. Yeah, that is different, different style of book. It's, it's a good book. Anyway, my friend, I thank see. you. Thank you for calling. Thanks Anything else? That's about it. Thanks All right. So thank you very much. Thank you. We are, you know, we, as you know, we take calls from Muslims. And if you are an ex-Muslim, we can take as an exception. If not. Please don't, you know, you can ask us in the, in the chat. Let's see, here we have a Muslim. He called himself uh, Ali. Let's see. Maybe is it online? Maybe this is an older text. Let's see. I think it's an older text. Yeah, this is older text. Do we have any Muhammadan? If you have a sheikh, if you are a sheikh, if you claim to have knowledge, and you, if you think you can refute us, please feel free. Call us. Anyone?
You know, I find it very funny that this guy, he called himself Palestine and he's Pakistani. And he keeps saying when the verses were revealed, hey, uh, Abdul, when, you, when a Muslim, he's saying the verses were revealed. Can you tell us how they are revealed? Just to show you how Islam is a mockery of anyone have little brain. When the verses are revealed, when you see the word revealed, you say, wow, the word of Allah was revealed? How? <laughs> how the Quran was revealed? Shall I show you? Palestine boy, you're a prophet. He used to receive a sound of a bell. Not jungle bells, different one. When the Quran was revealed, that's deep. You shocked us in the heart, brother. And the funny is, Muhammad he said that shit. The the the, the bell is the uh, the instrument, the musical instrument of Shaitan. It's in front of you. This is Sahih. This is all Sahih. The musical instrument of shaitan. Even angels will not enter a house. Which there is a small bell. What about big bell? Do you see how big bell the Buddha in the church? Big, not small bell. <laughs> the one you use for your cat. This one will scare the hell of a... Have you ever heard of an angels? They cannot enter a house because of a bell. Why? Are you there? So you know those Muslim kids, they come and they say, the verse was revealed and you think like you are swimming now in a clear water and the ocean is so beautiful. It's a verse, it was revealed, there's angels, there's God, there's a prophet. And then we find that it was revealed to him in the sound of a bell. In the top, in the top of that, angels will not even accompany any people who have a bell with them. That's why, you know, Billy Clinton never have angels with him. I mean, his name is Bill. Just imagine it. Think about it for a second. So, you're a prophet. He have a phobia, and his God have a phobia, and the angel they have a weakness to the point a little bell can destroy them. And then we find that Muhammad himself, he received his inspiration in a sound of a bell. Read it, and this is Sahih Al Bukhari. Sahih. Abu Al Harith he said Ibn Hashim. He asked the prophet. How does the divine inspiration come to you, Prophet of Allah? When you see the beginning, divine, look at the word, divine. Divine what? Inspiration. That's deep. I mean, we have to admit, all of us, it's a divine, and it is inspiration. What do you want more? Huh? What's wrong with you? You want more proof that the prophet is a prophet? It's a divine. It is inspiration. Okay, how he receive it? This is verse Bismillah. Ah. Okay, this one is Alhamdulillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, okay, this one is says time to, for lunch. Verse revealed revelation. But you're you're a prophet, obviously mentally ill. Hear voices, hear sounds are not what does have to do with God? And if you're a prophet, he received inspiration in the sound of a bell. How he translated to Quran? How the Quran became in Arabic? The German are listening. What a, what, a, what a stupid religion. This is a religion. This is, this is, you know, and they say to you, you make a mockery. This is, it's a mockery. This is a mockery. So, shaitan musical instrument is the bell. Angels will not accompany a person have a, have a bell. 
And then angels sometimes come to me with the voice of a bell. Do we have any brave Muslim? I hope I'm not insulting you, Muslim, when I say brave. Hmm? Somebody offered Shabir Ali $1,000 per hour to debate me. My friend, give me that $1,000 for me and forget about Shabir Ali. <laughs> You offer him one thousand dollars, and he is sending me the WhatsApp, the the, the the you know the WhatsApp of Shabir Ali. What the, I had offered Shabir one thousand per hour for a debate. He accepted. After he realized what I have say, he got this uh, this appeared. Oh, so he accept, but then he noticed that it is a Christian prince. Okay. Uh, all right. They are sending me the text, the chat, and uh, with Shabir. I don't know if this is clear for you to read. I don't know. <laughs> One thousand dollar for me. Ah. <laughs> uh, you know, my friend, for $1,000, Muhammad himself will come to debate me. Are you kidding me? I mean, this guy was desperate for little pennies. He married a woman. She is way, way older than him just because of her pennies. Not because of her panties. Do we have any Muhammadan? I should, die. I should do a business like Muhammad. I marry a very rich woman. She can be very old, and she have no teeth to, for, for safety and security. You know, she would not bite me, and she will stay very early. And uh, you know, I take her flight jet, and I claim that I was meeting with Jibril, and uh, I invite like I, I will hire some beautiful uh, girls to work in the in the jet. You know, to serve. Uh, you know, the jet, not me. You know, take take a note, please. A'uzu billah, a'uzu billah, a'uzu billah. <laughs> oh boy. Any Abdul? <clears throat> Do you think Chabir will accept to cry? Ex ex accept? My friend, I don't know. I, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I cannot predict who accept or don't accept. People heart can change. People, they can switch from worshiping the true God to worship the devil or vice versa. But this is not well, you know this is not my really my concern uh, you can you can, you can make your decision if you are stupid to convert to islam you can be you know, I, I believe it's a stupid decision to convert to islam for a muslim i believe it's a smart decision no problem but anyone have little brain he should ask himself a very little question this god allah which muslim never saw never met they never heard his voice he promised us if we go to heaven we will have a tree of banana. Tree of banana. We will have a banana, actually. He did not say even the tree. Uh, <clears throat> when I, you know, when my, myself, I say to myself, you know, like when I was a kid, uh, reading, as you see, you go to school, everything is Islam, 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 Islam. You know, they flood you, hoping that you will be a banana. You know, you will be a banana. You know, they want to make you a banana. And then, you know, you ask yourself, why does God is mentioning banana? What exactly the reason? The reason is very simple. Anything. Anything. Uh, people they wish to have in Saudi Arabia, 
which means something they don't really have. Or let us say they consider it as, an, as a must to have. It's mentioned in the Quran. As an example, the Arab, they sleep in the floor. Until now, actually, the Bedouin, they sleep in the floor. Muhammad, he promised them beds. Raised bed, not just bed. Why? Because those are something they don't have. Beds? We will have beds, we? Uh, a lot of water, a lot of greenery. Why? Because they are people of the desert. The God, he promised them shade in heaven. There's no heat. There's no cold because they suffer from both. They suffer from extreme cold at night. And I don't know if you've been in the desert before or in Saudi Arabia. And extreme heat in the daytime. And then we find this God. He promised even by fruits like the fig or olive. You ask yourself, why the God He swear by a fruit. When I say swear, I mean swear. He swear. He take an oath. Why he want to do that? Isn't it the most silly act of God to swear by fig? To swear by olive. And then he swear by the Mount of Sinai. Muhammad he heard in the Mount of Sinai there is fig trees. There is olive trees. And then you will see that the verse after it have nothing to do with the verse before it. The Mount of Sinai and this city made secure. What does this city have to do? This is why you see when there's, I don't know if you saw some videos, documentaries. In their documentary study, they say that the city of Mecca is not really where Muhammad was, exists. It was in Jordan. I don't know if you saw this documentary. I, I, forgot, uh, I forgot the name of the geologist who did this study. So he did some study in geology, etc., whatever, and history. And he came with this conclusion. And this verse will make you think about it this way because what the Mount of Sinai and what the city, which is the city of Muhammad, have to do with each other? And what is the connection and how we jump from here to there? And then he speak about how he created the man. What does this have to do with the previous verse? What the fig and the olive have to do with God anyway? You swear by them. Swear. You know, always you swear by something higher than you. Like I swear by God. Or you swear by something so dear to you, like you swear by your son. We as a Christian, by the way, we should not swear at all. So you can swear, I swear by, like for me, I don't know, I have nothing dear to me. Let us see. What is dear to me? <laughs> I swear by Muhammad. This is the most dear person to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it it, uh, it it make like a, 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 a like a rabbi music. But then he could not continue. He you know he broke the word and he he ended with taqwim. Taqwim is not the same as amin. Then he says thumma radnahu asfalu safilin. This is stupid. There's no meaning. You know, it's, it's useless. Useless. What the religion of Islam have to do with fig? Then who can give you the lie after this about this judgment? What this? What is the judgment? Garbage and garbage. Banana. The banana religion. Your penis will be a banana. 
pinless banana. The God who promised you banana. Have you ever heard of a God he promised you a bracelet? Can he forget once one verse he says breast breast from gold and the other verse says breast from silver? And why we are going to wear bracelet in heaven? What you see, uh, uh, people who pray uh, uh, wear those bracelet usually they want to show their luxury. You know what I mean? They are rich. But we are in heaven. What we will show if everybody were embraced, what the point? And why do you want to be embraced anyway? So here it says that you will be wearing, will be given to them, they are in a bracelet of gold, and they shall wear green robes of fine silk. The fact, uh, it doesn't say just silk. It says silk made in Iran, stabrak. The stabrak is like Gucci at that time, like the most expensive silk. This is natural silk of the rich, rich, rich people. So does God imagine if he is making Quran now, he will promise you what is the most expensive? I'm not expert, but I heard about Gucci. I never had, I never had Gucci before, you know? I always, I try to catch Gucci, Gucci go. I don't know why. So, what's the rock? And then you will be reclining in the, on, in the top of your couches. What, what the heck is that? This is heaven? What do you mean, why not? Why you want to buy those expensive clothes? Go to Walmart, get the jeans for $14, and that's it. Do you think anyone care really what they are wearing? And if there's somebody care really what are you wearing, that's mean he don't care for you. <laughs> what, why? I'm the last one who to spend money over, you know, expensive clothes. It's a silly, it's a silly act. Actually, they are fooling you. When you spend too much money, even if you are rich, the person who is making you spend that money, he is fooling you. Because it's not worth it. I mean, the, the bag cost $14,000. Why? $14,000? For a bag? For a purse? If I'm married and my wife, she buy one, I will send her free shipping and hand it into Allah with the bag. <laughs> So anyway, but you know, this is, this is mean. Islam is speaking to your greed. You know, you, uh, he, 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 is Muhammad trying to make you a greedy person who is dreaming about gold and silver and bracelet and silk? I mean, we are in heaven. What is that? Who care for silk in heaven? Is that what heaven is about? We are in silk? So if I buy silk here, now it's fine? Can you believe how stupid this region is? Uh, <laughs> Let us see. Until now, we did not get any Muslim to text us. Do you see how brave they are? Yeah. The funny is that the Muslim, they say, one of you will send me email saying, the Muslim, they claim that when they speak to Christian prince, if they, if a person, he, you know, he, uh, uh, he got Christian prince busted, he hang up on him. That's, uh, you know, listen, if this is true, even that will work for your benefit. You can record it and you can show people how I run away from you. So this is a false excuse. I hang up on people. They are kids. They are stupid. They are insulting. They are just uh, wasting our time. I have to repeat the question a thousand times to make them answer the question. And at the end, they, answer. they don't answer. So I hang up on them. 
Do you remember what happened last time with this uh, guy, Ultimate Fart? I have to hang up on him. He's stupid. He's very insulting. He's very rude. I challenge you. I challenge you to show me where that says in the Quran, uh, obey the Prophet. You are a liar. I got you. I said, Abdul, it's in front of you. It's in front of your eyes. Where in the Quran it says no, in the Quran it says obey Allah and the Messenger. That doesn't make any difference. So what if I show it to you? It says obey the Messenger and obey Allah. So if we put them first or second, it would make a difference. Okay, we can show it to you. Any Muhammadan? Any Muslim? Anyone want to help us to kiss the black stone and receive salvation? The only religion, if you kiss a black stone in it, your sin is erased. It's called Islam. And yet they accuse everybody that they are not pagan. And we are the pagan. Do you remember the conversation I have in the chat with the Muslim website? I said to the guy in the chat, oh, by the way, why, why, uh, why the prophet, he kissed the black stone? Took him five minutes to answer, and he said, because it's holy. And I said, okay, and why it's holy? Took him five per, per minute to answer, and he said, because the prophet kissed it. <laughs> I mean, look at, the, look, at, look at the genius answers. Why the prophet kissed the black stone? Because it's holy. Okay, why it's holy? Because the prophet kissed it. Anyone can come with better answer from the black stone kissers? And then we find that the black stone, if you touch it, it will erase your sin. That's why I have sin. I have no sin. I touch a lot of black stones. Man, I used to do a lot of hiking. I spent the day hiking. Once I was hiking, and right away there was a snake in front of me. I took a hike right away when I saw it. <laughs> like imagine you are hiking, now you have your hand up, you put your hand in the rock, and you want to get your head up, and then boing, a snake head coming in. <laughs> I took a hike and fell down. <laughs> I jumped right away. Oh boy. Uh. And by the way, the Muslims, when they die, they will see a snake which is bold. A bold snake, brother, in the grave. Who remember the, the video? Guys, did you download the video? Remember the guy from Pakistan? The one who speak about the punishment of the grave and the snakes in the grave? Remember? Hmm. You should watch this video. You will die laughing. Uh, so what, we have no Muslims left? What happened to the Muslims? Jesus is not in the Torah at all. Just like Muhammad was not in it. Yeah, Abdul, I don't know, you are looking for a smart, uh, smart idiot. Well, isn't it the Torah speak about, or let's say the, the uh, David, isn't it David? And let me show you here the conversation. The Messiah, he said to the Jews, you are saying Jesus is not right? Okay. The Messiah, he said to the Jews, what do you say of Christ? Christ is said, what are you saying about the Messiah? Whose son is he? They, they were saying to him, he is son of David. He said to them, and how did David by the Spirit call him the Lord Jehovah? For he said, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I place your enemy 
under your feet. If therefore David call him the Lord Jehovah, how is he his son? And no man could give him an answer. So when this guy he says Jesus does not exist in the Torah, eh? bad news to you. The, the Jews until now they are waiting for the Messiah. So if the Messiah is not exist in the Torah, because the Messiah is Jesus, if you say no, he's not, well, this is your problem. Don't get married, okay? Your wife, she will exchange you for Gucci. Anything from Gucci. She will go to Gucci, she said, give me a shoe, I will give you my husband. They will say, we don't take, uh, you know, we don't take useless stuff. You have to take us something valuable. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? I don't want you to love me, my friend. Love yourself first. Save yourself. You will go to hell if you don't believe in Christ. And if you say that in the Torah or in the Old Testament there is no nothing about Christ, uh, this is because you are deceiving yourself. All the books is about the coming of Christ. So you are just fooling yourself. Do we have any uh, Muslim? Any Muhammadan? CP is anti-Gucci. No, I'm not anti-Gucci. If you give it to me for free, I will take it. Trust me, I will take it, no problem. But I will try to sell it again, you know? Because it's a waste of money. It's a lot of money for what? What I will do with it? You know? What is the difference between a pant you wear for ten dollars and the other one will cost you a thousand? Who care? See, people who they see themselves with the clothing, they have nothing except the clothing or the money. So if I see myself only exist if I'm wearing expensive clothing, nice perfume, jewels, jewelry, driving expensive car, that's mean I have no life actually. I don't. I don't have a. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I like to have a nice house, like in front of a, a view of a mountain. I will love that. That is worth it. A uh, uh, nice balcony in the beach. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, save your money for something useful. So one day you grow old and you enjoy your life. Reading books, enjoying the view, something useful. A, a piece of a clothes. What you would do with it? You wear it once, twice. You, th you are throwing money in the garbage. Sad guru, he don't like Gucci. Yeah, but he spent his summer in USA. <laughs> you know, he's very humble. Sad guru, he is very humble. So he fly in the most expensive seat, and he go to the most expensive hotel, and he own a very nice villa. But brother, he didn't wear Gucci because Gucci didn't make Indian clothes. I mean, all those who speak about how humble they are, they live in the most expensive houses, they have the most fancy life, and they claim that they are humble. For me, I don't mind to have a big villa. Give me a big villa, I will take it. Why not? Nice garden. I don't like swimming pool, by the way. I hate them. Why want to swim in swimming pool? Swimming pool is a stupid thing, actually. Uh, I wonder if you were born a Muslim. No, my friend, I was smart since my childhood. Call yourself a Muslim prince and make a channel to attack a Christianity. I wonder if you were born a Muslim. Would you call yourself a Muslim prince and attack a Christianity? And what? That's very deep, my friend. You know what, Anwar? I think I'm going to make you admin from now on when I am not live on air. So from now on, you are admin when there's no chat. That's it. I hired you. Look, guys, look what Anwar, Anwar, he was thinking, sitting in his chair. Hmm. You know, there's some people, they are deep thinkers. You cannot deny that. I mean, they think. They think really deep. So Anwar, hmm. he 
was squeezing it. I mean, don't take me wrong, he squeezed something good. So, I wonder, I wonder how, I wonder why, if you were born a Muslim, you are going to attack the fly? What the heck is that? Brother, you know, in Christianity, they don't promise you endless penis, my friend. If a Christianity promised endless penis, I would do. They don't promise me a woman her ass is one mile. That's scary, scaring the hell of me. I mean, women with a small ass are scared the hell of you. Imagine one mile. What if she fought in your face and you are smoking a cigarette? <laughs> don't you know that farting is a flammable? Oh, Lord have mercy. In order to attack Christianity, you have to give me a reason. Jesus says, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. How I can complain about that? But anyway, keep thinking, keep thinking. You know, you are the kind who keep thinking about the flight to the point he miss it. You know, just sit in the chair in the airport and think about your flight. Um, do we have any uh, smart Muslim? We have, we have somebody. Hello? 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 Yes, my friend, are you a Muslim? Do you have any uh, smart Muslim? Yes, you remember me, I, I we spoke before? Well, I, I, I hard to remember. I did not check your chat. Did we chat too? Um. Yeah, I see. I see you called me before. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, you called me last time in May 27, Friday 2022, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. So what, how I can help you, my friend? Um, I just, if, if it's okay, I, I, I pray to you. You want to pray to me? No, I mean, I pray for you. You pray for me, but you are a Muslim. Yes, I believe. But, is, the, but isn't it the, the Quran, Quran? Isn't it the Quran forbid you from praying to the Christians? No, in the Quran it says uh, in Surah Al Maida sixty nine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. See, indeed, the believers, the Jews, Syrians, and Christians, whoever truly believes in Allah, mm. and the last day does good, there will be no fear for them, nor they will grieve. That means those those Christians who truly follow their prophet. I mean, at the time of the prophet, I mean, the Christians who follow Jesus truly, uh -huh. then they will... Okay, well, so you, you can you can pray for the one who follow Jesus truly, right? Sorry, what's that? The one who follow Jesus truly. Yes, correct. Okay, well, according to the Islam, I don't follow Jesus, Jesus truly. According to... Oh, yes, correct. So you are you are fooling yourself then you cannot pray for me. And you, uh, you know, my friend, instead of saying I will pray for you, are you going to heaven yourself? Uh, inshallah. You just said inshallah. Yes, inshallah. What does that mean? I mean we strive for the best to enter paradise. You pray for the best to enter. So Islam, it doesn't guarantee you that you will go to heaven? Mm. Well, it says that all Muslims will go to, to heaven. Well, I, what I know the Quran says is that all of you will go to hell. What do you think? You mean for Muslims? Yeah, Muslims. Chapter 19, verse number 71, no, it, says, the... it says, all of you will enter hell. I think that will be those sinners. Will be what? The sinners. I mean, if they're Muslims, but then they... If no, they no, no. Sin... no, my friend, the verse says, وَمَا مِنْكُمُ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Not a single of you, single one of you, but he shall enter hell. Do you, ha do you have my, uh, my screen open? 
Look at my screen. So what verse is that? I will show you on the screen. Can you read? I will zoom out for you so you can read it. Chapter 19, verse number 71. And this is the interpretation of your prophet cousin. Not a single you, but he will enter hell in the exclusion of the messengers. And this is the Muslim interpretation, but the Quran doesn't say that, by the way. It says, Not a single one of you, but he shall enter hell. I have to look into the... We are looking. What do you mean you have to look? What are we doing now? I mean, I have to look at the tafsir. We are looking. This is tafsir. I mean, you said to me, you want to look to tafsir. I'm sure it's tafsir. You want to change tafsir? I can change tafsir. This is tafsir al Jalalain. If you don't like this one, here it says, not but shall come to it, that but shall enter hell. There is not one of you, but shall come to it, that is but shall enter hell. So my friend, the Quran promise you, you will enter hell. I have to research it. I have no My friend, what's wrong with you? I have to. I, I'm just showing you. This is this is the official Islamic website of the Kingdom of Jordan. It says 2021 Royal Ahl al Bayt Institute of Islamic Thought, Amman, Jordan. This is official government website. This is the Book of Jalalain. This is the Quran. This is chapter 19, verse number 71. And you keep saying to me, I have to search it. Search what? I just show it to you on the screen. Right. Yeah. So the poor you, you, you are being nice. You said you want to pray for me. In fact, I need to pray for you, my friend. You are going to go to hell. By the way, as long as you are going to hell, can I send a letter with you to Muhammad? Send a what, sorry? Can I send a letter with you to Muhammad? A letter? Yeah. Uh, what letter? You got busted. Busted for? They just read us two words, a letter from me to Muhammad. You go to his uh, room in the hell, you say to him, Christian Prince, he says to you, you got busted. That's all. Because you are going to hold your health guarantee. I mean, all of you, Mimi, Hijab, all this, you know, this gang, all of you, Aisha, Hafsa, oh, Omar, you will find the whole group there playing cards. Tell them all, Christian Prince says to you, you got busted. He says, in 71, there is none not um there is not one of you but will pass over it is not pass over it. this is false it says what my friend they lie to you in translation where you do huh? you go to dictionary he came to the water he drank from it so you have to go in it it's not pass over it that's a lie you know if it's pass over it why they are saying this those are scholars those are not a joke those are this ibn abbas is the cousin of your prophet don't Ibn Abbas know what Waridu I mean? They are fooling you. You are, you are from Indonesia, right? No, no. No? Okay. I am from Indonesia, by the way. I used to be Indonesian for three years. And then I became Japanese. And then I became a black, blonde, African-American from Japan. And now I do not know where I am, what I am from, because, you know, I used to kiss stones. And then I marry a woman. Her name is Khadija, and she drove me crazy. You know? So what do you think? You want to pray for me? What? So my, my this God will make my penis endless? Is that a really a, is that a good prayer? I mean, no, I imagine, imagine, you. my friend, imagine you are a person, Mr. Hadi. Your name is Hadi. So yeah. uh, imagine Hadi. You are here now. I don't know. You are not here. I mean, here, there, whatever you are. No, your penis go in the Amazon jungle. And you know, there they have a they have a fish. She eat anything move. I mean, I saw a, I saw a documentary. I mean, that scared the hell off me, man. 
you throw you throw the anything in the water even a rock those fish they will go crazy and she will fight over it so imagine imagine hmm? you go you have such an endless uh, penis may Allah extend it more and more and then your penis go by, by mistake you know there's no GPS in the time of the Prophet go to the Amazon uh, river and those fish brother they are waiting for you your penis will go in the water and bingo what? can you imagine what will happen to you no what do you mean you don't know i mean this is your penis not mine just you close your eyes and imagine so you are now promised an endless penis and this penis going over the sea, down the sea, like a phone cable, you know, like it's endless. And you don't know where it's going. Never stop. You gotta stop it because it's endless. The, the prophet says endless, it has to be endless. Because if it's a stop, it's not endless no more. That means lying. So imagine your penis go down the river, go up the river. I mean, imagine you pass the customs of China. Unbelievable. You will have like 10,000 stamps over your penis. I mean, I should show you my passport. They start putting stamps over stamps, stamps. Now, what the heck is that? So you have now endless penis. This is your passport. You know, they didn't see you even. They didn't even see your face yet. They are seeing the penis. So what kind of religion, this religion you are asking me to pray for, you will pray for me. Thank you very much. But all of it is about penis, vagina, asses. What the heck is that? Don't you want to use your brain, my friend? Yeah, of course. Okay, use it.